We've established that molecules can have this quality called handedness, and that that handedness is also associated with the presence of a chorality center on a molecule. We're going to take a moment now to see how we can identify these chirality centers, because if they exist, then we certainly have a molecule that is handed, or chiral, and if we don't have one, then chances are we do not have a chiral molecule. So our learning goals are recognizing when we have chirality centers in bond line diagrams, and also learning how to analyze a cyclic structure to determine if it has a chirality center. Let's start by reviewing what we know about chirality centers. We know that they have to be tetrahedral carbons that are bonded to four different groups. Oftentimes, the easiest way to identify them is to identify what they aren't. They cannot be a carbon with a multiple bond. They cannot be a terminal methyl carbon. And they can't be a carbon that's bonded to two of the same groups. So as we look at bond line diagrams, these give us some clues as to how we can recognize a chirality center in a molecule. We're going to do this by process of elimination and then analysis. So we will eliminate sp2, or multiple bonded carbons, as we are here. We can also eliminate any terminal methyl groups, as we are in this diagram. We can eliminate any CH2 groups, so this bent angle in a bond line diagram can also be eliminated. Well, you can see that we've eliminated most of the carbons in this bond line diagram. All we have to do is analyze what is left. So here's an example. It's a bottom line diagram that's similar to the last one that we looked at. We're going to find whether or not it has a chirality center. So as we look at this, 4 and 5 are sp2 carbons, that is trigonal planar carbons, so they cannot be chirality centers. 1 and 6 are terminal methyl groups, they cannot be chirality centers. 2 is a CH2 group in a chain, so it cannot be a chirality center also. This leads, leaves only one possibility, and that's carbon number 3. So we need to analyze that and determine if it, it is indeed bonded to four different groups. It is a tetrahedral carbon. It doesn't have any double bonds or triple bonds. It is bonded to an ethyl group, which is this C1C2 fragment. It is bonded to an OH, and it's bonded to a C3H5, and it's bonded to an H. So it is indeed bonded to four different groups. H is implied in this case because we never draw the H's in a bond line diagram. So in general, you should look for a carbon with three, that is with hydrogen implied, or with four bonds to different groups. So let's look at a few more examples. Now we're going to look at a chiral, uh, possibly chiral molecule that is cyclic. We would use the same kind of elimination scheme. We would notice that two and three are trigonal planar or sp2 carbons, so they cannot be chiral centers. 4 and 5 are CH2 groups. They cannot be chiral centers either. The only one that could be a chiral center is carbon number 1. But is it? It's hard to tell when we have a cyclic molecule because uh, at this point we can't tell if two of those are bonded to the same thing or not. So this is what we do. We take this cyclic molecule and we begin to unravel it as we go in each direction. So we start at the center that we think is a chirality center and we examine each carbon as we move around the ring to determine if any differences arise. So here's how we might unravel that ring. What I've done is put the carbon 1 in the center and then I've gone around the ring in each direction getting back to 1 at the end. So this isn't a real molecule. All I'm doing is making a representation of the cyclic molecule that we have there. We're starting at carbon 1, and as we move around the ring at the very first stop, we find that carbon number 2 is a trigonal planar center, and carbon number 5 is a tetrahedral carbon. These are clearly different. So what this means is that carbon number 1 is attached to a hydrogen, which is implied. It's attached to the OH, which is shown, and it's attached to carbon number 2, a a trigonal planar carbon and carbon number five, which is a tetrahedral carbon. Since those two are different, even though it seems like a subtle difference, those are different, then this is indeed a chiral, a chirality center.